Uh, so the Center for Comparative Studies of um, Civilizations welcomes you to a virtual uh, lecture and online exhibition showing original folk art um, from Bangladesh created by amazing artist uh, Talha bin Shams. And we believe that um, it will be an amazing opportunity uh, to to hear more about um, about Bangladeshi art and culture. Um, the introduction to the meeting will be presented by uh, Anna Wojtyk. I just want to uh, inform you that um, our meeting will be recorded for uh, for the um, promotion uh, uh, purpose. And Anna, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Natalia. Thank you. Uh, good evening, all ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very much for your attendance. Uh, my name is Anna Wojcik and I'm a graduate of the Jagiellon University, uh, the history department. And it gives me a great pleasure to be a part of this wonderful event conducted by my own university. And I would like to uh, thank the Center for Comparative Studies of Civilizations for making this happen. Thank you so much. Uh, so um, this presentation, however virtual, is brought to you uh, live from a beautiful city of Kraków, uh, the headquarters of many Polish kings. Uh, apart from its uh, rich history and a huge number of monuments, uh, is also a place where one of uh, the oldest uni European university was born, so the Jagiellonian, which we both are honored to represent throughout this lecture. Uh, I know we have a few of international guests, so let me maybe uh, share my screen and uh, play you a short, um, short movie about our wonderful city. And please remember to add it to your bucket list when when thinking about your future traveling. Okay. Uh, uh, Anya, the sound. Have you played the sound? Unfortunately, for some reason, we don't have this sound, but it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. We thought it was going to be default, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I hope it's okay. At least uh, the audience will have some idea about the place that we are living in. So you can paste the link to the video on the chat so everyone can see it afterwards. Yeah, that's also a good idea, of course. Okay, uh, I will share the link in the chat later then. I'm so sorry, okay. Uh, all right, so um, moving towards uh, today's lecture. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the stories from Bangladesh. So most people uh, when asked uh, about Bangladesh instantly think about India and it's a, uh, very hard for them to separate uh, these two countries, which uh, despite of um, having many things in common, uh, are of course separate and individual countries. 
Um, Bangladesh, with its rich culture, has a lot to present and to be proud of. Uh, I hope you will see a big part of it during this lecture, given by my amazing colleague and uh, friend. So uh, with no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me introduce you to Mr. Talha bin Shams. Hi, hello, everyone. Uh, so, okay, thank you. Thank you, Anna. So I will take it from here. I hope everyone can hear me properly. Uh, if yes, then say yes, so that I know, because uh, yes. we are, thank you, because you know, we are having, uh, no, no, no we, we are having actually uh, some kind of technical difficulties. I hope before I play um, any kind of videos or anything, I will, I will ask if uh, the sound is working or not. If not, then I will uh, just paste uh, the link for the videos because it's just a little bit like short, very short videos, two or three minutes movies. Uh, I'll, I'll paste the link um, in the chat so everyone can you know watch it rather than me trying to overdo it because that's how uh, we used to have our classes during the uh, COVID period, uh, we had all, almost all our classes were online and that's how we used to go through the classes whenever we had uh, technical difficulties. A little bit about me, uh, as I can see many people here already know me, uh, but then we have a few more people who have probably, who have never met, or uh, I mean, of course we have never met, who probably don't know much about me. So I'm from Bangladesh and I arrived here uh, in, in, in Poland at the end of 2019 to, uh, to study, uh, to pursue my master's degree uh, at the University of uh, Maria Kiri in Lublin. Lublin is a beautiful city in Poland. Uh, that was my, actually, it's very emotional when I talk about Lublin. It was my first city in here in this part of the world. And uh, I arrived at the end of 2019 and right after I arrived within two months, so the COVID started. Uh, unfortunately, I could not see much of Lublin, but it was one of the best time of my entire life, to be honest. I mean, I still, uh, almost every single time when we talk about Poland to, or uh, in general about Europe, to my family or friends, I always say that this is one of the best decisions that I have made, uh, coming to study in Lublin. Because the university, the administration, uh, the professors, and everybody we had, I met, I met there. It's, it changed my life in a lot of different ways, in a very positive way. And uh, I graduated from there at the end of 2021. Uh, then I got a job, uh, which might sound funny because I got a job in a corporation. And on top of that, I actually got a job in a bank. And uh, so I, 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 and then that's how I moved to Krakow from Lublin. I started working for a bank, and then uh, after working for a few months in there, we saw. Uh, I, uh, this is my another job here, and then we came, and then that's how Anna and me we met. Uh, so we actually worked together. We are good friends. That's how we became friends, and I'm so grateful that we have this opportunity to to. To, you know, to do this event together. And by the way, uh, uh, well, I and uh, before I, you know, go on and on and on, on about myself, let me tell you one interesting thing, interesting fact about Anya. She's also an, uh, a brilliant artist, actually, but like a little hidden. She's also a great artist. Uh, artist. She 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 creates art as well, but she struggles with her time because she has to take care of her kids and husband and the entire family. But we all are so grateful and so uh, so proud of Anya as well, mm. because at least uh, you know she tries and she to follow her passion. Um, I studied bachelor uh, fine arts. I graduated in uh, with with uh, I, I mean I majored with painting and um, and, and and graphic design uh, back in Bangladesh uh, during my bachelor's degree. Then I studied uh, social studies as well in the capital. Uh, the I mean, the, 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 this was the, this is the, uh, one of the great universities in Bangladesh there. Uh, the capital is called Dhaka. So it was uh, the University of Dhaka. And then I came here and I have had few exhibitions, painting exhibitions before uh, coming to 
uh, Europe. And, and here I also had a few exhibitions in Poland. And my, my first exhibition was actually in 2022 in Radom, from Radom Resursa. And then uh, it kind of started. And uh, I just recently, uh, I'm so grateful and so lucky that recently I had, uh, I don't know, probably it was my fourth or fifth exhibition in Poland. Uh, it just inaugurated in a city called, uh, forgive me, Przepraszam if I'm going to pronounce it wrong because it's quite challenging for me to pronounce few Polish words. Though I'm learning, I understand a lot before, uh, but it, still I struggle with speaking. So the city is called Helm and it's close to uh, Lublin. And uh, the, the, so the, at the Central Museum, we are having this. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Professor Magdalena, I guess, uh, wants to uh, uh, say I'm something. I'm sorry, Talha, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I wanted to applaud for your pronunciation of Helm, but I uh -huh. pressed the wrong button. <laughs> well done. <laughs> oh, OK, thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, at the Central Museum in there, uh, the exhibition, it just, I mean, the inauguration, it took place last Friday, I guess, 3rd of uh, third of um, February yeah and it's still going on so 25 pieces of my new works uh, are, those are all new not all like two or three yeah but mostly 20 pieces, 25 pieces of my works are there on display and it will be I mean the exhibition will go on until the end of May so if any of you happen to be around or living around uh, the city Please go and try to, you know, try to have a look, and then you can always uh, write me or tell me about it, how you find it. So that's pretty much it. I uh, I love creating art, and I make this kind of art, and um, I actually create um, folk art, which is like uh, Bangladeshi, uh, Bangladesh. Uh, uh, like Bangladeshi folk art, I, that's what I create. And I will just share my screen now so that lots of talking and so that you guys don't get bored of me. Uh -uh. And uh, so let me try, okay. I hope everyone can see my screen or it is not working, is it? Yep, yeah, it is, yeah. Okay, great. So the screen is working and let me share the slide. All right. So uh, I'm just trying to start the slide. Okay. I hope it's uh, working or not. Can you see it? the presentation and trying to mm -hmm. okay i hope uh, everyone else also so i try to create um, um art which is uh incorporated with our culture with our uh, not like bangladesh because uh bangladesh is actually a very multicultural country it's a multicultural country with so many different kind of ethnic groups so many different kind of people uh not just one uh, so I try to create art which uh, kind of folk, fo I, I, I use all these uh, folk forms, folklore, uh, like centuries old folk forms and folk motifs from our Bengali culture. So Bengali actually it's the people who live in Bangladesh and around Bangladesh as well in some of the, um, uh, some of these um, uh, states in India. And uh, I try to create these uh, art with using all these uh, folk forms and motifs and basically using my memory. And I'm also, I'm sorry if I'm not, you know, I'm not, uh, if I'm, if I speak too much, if I say too much, then you have to tell me that Talha, you need to take a break, take a break and stop speaking too much. Uh, and uh, so without any further ado, let's go and so introducing Bangladesh, I will try, uh, you know, I will try to go through this presentation as quick as possible. Uh, so the, for the first few minutes, uh, we will learn a little bit about Bangladesh, about the country where it is located and how it is and about its food and culture so that 
uh, and then we will watch a small uh, movie about Bangladesh. I mean, as people and culture, so that we will have some 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 idea that what culture I'm actually actually referring to. And uh, I ask for your forgiveness in advance if I'm not go uh, you know going very well because this is my first time doing something like this. So I might make some mistakes. Feel free to correct me to tell me if you don't understand anything if you if you struggle with something so bangladesh this is uh, if everyone can see my screen so this is bangladesh uh, it is located in here uh, and as you can see there are two maps so we are all surrounded by india and then we have a small piece of our border uh, bordering with uh, myanmar or burma and then we have bhutan in the north and nepal and then we have china so that's the country basically pretty much it's small it's not that big but there are a few fun facts about it uh, and uh, so the capital city is called Dhaka and the country is it's not that big it's just the area it's 147,570 square kilometer and the official language is Bengali or Bangla and we uh, gained our independence from Pakistan Pakistan is another country in the region um, in, in 1971 and desh, this word, is actually, it's derived from the Sanskrit language, Sanskrit word desha. And it actually means land or country. So the name Bangladesh it actually means lands of Bengal or country of Bengal. And it's a small, lush country in uh, South Asia. And we have our sea as well, which we call Bay of Bengal. It is surrounded entirely by neighboring India, as you saw. And then we have a small. And... Uh, the few interesting facts about Bangladesh. It has, it is actually the most riverine country in the world. It is small. It's probably one third of Poland, I guess, or even one fourth of Poland. Uh, it, but it is the most mo most most riverine country. It has more than seven hundred rivers, and it has the world's longest natural, uh, like uninterrupted sea beach uh, and the place is called Cox's Bazar. It is 121 kilometer long and it's really stunning. It's breathtaking. And the, about the rivers, so we actually have uh, rivers kind of, the, the rivers are kind of crazy because we actually have uh, um, kind of like the rivers, the width, if I talk about the width, then uh, the, we have rivers which has which is as wide as uh, 12, 13, 16, or 18 kilometer, uh, like that. And usually the rivers has, it's wide, uh, it's with it's like five kilometers, six kilometers. The river close to my hometown during the normal season, I mean, when it's not raining, it is as wide as uh, three to four kilometers. And when it rains, then it gets, it becomes something six, seven kilometers wide. So. That's why probably you see most of the time you see, um, you know, in the news, Bangladesh and flood. It's because it has a lot to do with it because it's a river in country. And yeah, flood is a natural phenomena every year. But people somehow survives. Uh, and the big cities are crazy. Uh, the traffic is insane. Uh, big cities in Bangladesh are nothing. Actually, it's nothing close to, I mean, any, any, any European cities or any cities within Poland. Uh, it's, it's a lot of noise, uh, people speaking really loud and honking horns, a lot of like a lot of shocking things, but it has its charm. It's also somehow incredible. Uh, the capital city, I'll just sh share a small video about the capital city so that you will have some idea how the cities look like. And if you want to experience the real Bangladesh, then you must travel outside of the cities because that's a must. Within the cities, uh, it also has very interesting things to offer. But if you go outside of the cities, then you can get this kind of scenarios, the photos that you are watch, uh, that you can see now. And it is actually known as the land of six seasons. Yeah, we really have six seasons. I hope still because the world is changing, the climate is changing super fast. Uh, the highest temperature is forty. 0.1 uh, degrees and the lowest is actually 1.2 uh, 
uh, usually one, two, three degrees, and it happens mostly in the northern part of the country and where I come from, because I was born in the northern part of the country in a small town called uh, Saidpur. It is in the northern part of the country, and uh, we really have super cold winter. We have the Himalayan wind, even uh, people within the country, I mean, from different part of Bangladesh, they actually have no proper idea about the northern winter in that country because it's really it's almost as cold as it is here uh for poland it would be like zero degrees that's how we we feel during the winter in the northern part and it used to be one of the of course poorest country 20 30 years ago it's growing uh the developments are happening infrastructure is visible it's 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 moving because people are working really hard. Uh, we have indigenous people. They have their uh, lots of lots of indigenous group of people. They have their own unique culture, society, religion, and customs. And 90% uh, of the population is uh, are Muslim. The, uh, and then we have Hindus, as you can see in this slide. Uh, we have Buddhism, Christianity, and others as well. Different other different kinds of religious communities, um, ethnic communities, all of that. I'm not going into too much in details because it's all already it's an I think it's it's a very challenging job to cover up an entire country, its people and then its culture and then its food and then my work within one hour. Uh, it's been already up, yeah, but but I'm going to try. I'm going to try my best. Uh, it is it is a Muslim majority country, but luckily we still have I mean, well, by constitution, we are still a secular state. So I hope, you know, people are not just fighting and trying to live uh, within harmony and peace. And uh, so uh, before we watch the movie, uh, this is a, the, so ca can you see the slides? Is it going all right? I might be slide yes, number. Yes, yes. Yeah, all right. So yep. you can see this. Uh, this this one big photo of this forest it is called Shundarban in bangla and it is one of the largest mangrove forest in the world actually and what is mangrove mangrove how can i explain it mangrove forests are actually uh made uh, made with special kind of those trees which has its roots above the uh the, the ground the roots are not uh, under underneath, not under the ground. They are above, and uh, it has 700 species. We have this uh, Bengal tiger, which is like our natural animal, Royal Bengal tiger, and they are incredible. And uh, it covers an area of 10,000 uh, kilometer square, so it's really really huge. And a short history. I know people. We don't really want to talk about the entire history because then it might get super boring the entire presentation but a little bit about it just a little bit to give you some idea uh during the 19th and 12th century it was invaded by the arabian rulers i mean uh, present day bangladesh uh then it then it was invaded by the greek and romans then by the portuguese and at the end the britishers uh they came and then we were under the british rule for next 200 years Actually, there was back then there was no Bangladesh, nothing existed. It was just all united India. And then we had the Sultanate period, Sultan, like the Muslim rulers uh, period. It was a good time. Uh, it was a good time. And present day Bangladesh and few Indian states, which are called West Bengal, Asham, and Tripura, they were all together actually a kingdom. And it used to be one of the, not one of the, it was the richest kingdom. Uh, in the whole region back then. I don't remember the proper date. And, um, but then the Britishers came and they, uh, they ruled us for 200 years. Uh, we were under the British uh, authority. And, and um, when they were leave, uh, and, and yeah, many, hor I mean, horrible things happen, which we, I, I, I believe uh, within the European settings and European education system, people don't get to hear about all of this uh, a lot. So actually around 500, 5 million people died during this. The, the, there was a famine, it happened. Uh, I don't know how to describe famine. Uh, 
it happened during this uh, British rule in 1943, and uh, five million people actually within this Bengal kingdom they died because of no food, and it was human made. So and then also a lot of things happened. I'm not going into detail. And the partition of Bengal, this kingdom, this entire kingdom, it happened in 1947 when the Britishers were leaving India after losing the war. Before 1947, as I said, there was no Bangladesh. It was all together. The present day nations of Pakistan and Bangladesh were part of an undivided, undivided India during the British rule. And um, so when they were leaving, the Britishers, they divided the entire Indian subcontinent into three parts. So that's how... Uh, India and Pakistan was born, and we were given to Pakistan in 1947 without our will. If we go back to the slides a little bit, so as you can see, this is Bangladesh. In the middle, we have this huge, huge country, India, and then here we have Pakistan. And it happened on the, the Britishers, they did it on the basis of religion. Uh, which nobody wanted because though the majority of the people living in Bangladesh are and were Muslims and also in Pakistan, but our language, our food, our culture, uh, everything, literally anything and everything is completely different. There is no uh, similarities between these two countries and our anything. So that's why the, uh, of course, after, you know, Uni uniting us with Pakistan against our will. Of course, you know, the obvious things started happening. People, of course, did, couldn't take it properly. But then in 1952, people actually protested for the first time against the Pakistani rulers. On February 21, 1952, students of University of Dhaka, they actually launched a nationwide protest against accepting Urdu as the nation's official language. Urdu is uh, the official language of Pakistan, which is a which which is a still a complete alien language to 99% of the Bangladeshis or Bengalis. Uh, but at the, uh, it is started uh, by the students of University of Dhaka, but then all kinds of people from all walks of entire society, they joined uh, all of them, doctors, uh, farmers, uh, engineers, scientists, teachers, housewives, you know, all kinds of people, they joined and they marched. And it, it is believed, the, if you Google the entire history, this 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 movement was is called uh, the Bengali language movement. But if you Google it, then Google might show you that, okay, not much, like 20,000 people were killed or 10,000 or 5,000, actually not. It is believed because uh, these, uh, the, I mean, the Pakistani rulers back at then, uh, at, at that time, they, they did not want um, these news to to come out in the international media, but it was coming out. Uh, more than one hundred thousand people were killed within over a night and over a day, within a day, uh, only because we wanted to speak in our own language. And they they were like the Pakistani people. I mean, the rulers were like, no, no more Bengali. It has to be only Urdu in their language. And this move movement is called Bengali language movement. And uh, finally, anyway, then uh, what happened that by, after the protesting, so that was the first time Bangladesh, actually, people of Bangladesh started protesting. And then it went on and on until 1971. We gained our independence after a nine-month war. A lot of things happened. Uh, more than three, three million women and girl childs were raped and burned alive and a lot of uh, disastrous things happened, super depressive thing, and lots of like probably more than a million, more than two million people were killed. No, not two million, sorry, more than 200,000 people were killed. Yeah, but that's how it was. Bangladesh offici officially, they sent a proposal to UNESCO to declare 21st February as an international mother language day. And the proposal was supported uh, at the 30th General Conference of UNESCO in 1991 and then it became they declared it 21st of february as an international mother language day and since 1999 uh, nine, international mother language day is actually worldwide uh, observed it is an annual observance held on the same day it also happens in uh, poland around the world and that's how the country gained you know the independence so that's pretty much about it uh, i hope i did not 
make our audience, I mean, super bored or I did not drive you super crazy with the history. I thought it's a little bit of, you know, how the country actually formed. Uh, it was, I think it is important to tell you before I keep on going. And uh, when we are, go I mean, when the Pakistanis left, the Pakistanis actually kept doing the same kind of things. They, they, they treated us in the same way how the Britishers treated us for 200 years. So when they left in 1971, we were left with nothing. And when I say nothing, I actually mean nothing. There was nothing left, nothing, no food, no job, no money, absolutely nothing. People were dying once again on the street. So, but people quickly uh, understood that they have to work super hard to change their lives because since the country is born, was born, we also had a lots of lots of political problems uh, with rulers and uh, political parties and you know uh, stabilizing our government and all of that. So people quickly realized that they have to work super hard and general, I'm talking about mass population and they are still working super hard. And that's why the country is progressing uh, a lot and it's, it's quite visible. And I guess after this, this slide is for Anya. Yes, yeah, so uh, thank you, Talha. So after the uh, a little bit of uh, history part, uh, could you please uh, share your screen further because your presentation is gone for now. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Can you see it now? Okay. Okay, not yet. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, um, uh, right now in this part, you may see that uh, like Bangladesh offers many tourist attractions, including archaeological sites, historical mosques, temples, churches, and monuments. Uh, longest natural beach in the world. Uh, pictures, landscape, hill forest and wildlife, uh, rolling tea gardens and stripes. Uh, tourists find the rich uh, flora and fauna and colorful tribal life very enchanting. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, now would be the time to watch a small movie about Bangladesh uh, to see its people and culture. So Talha, if you could <clears throat> video. Yeah. Uh... Just a second, I'm yeah. trying. All right, I hope it's working. Uh, we will watch this small video about the, about, I mean, about Bangladesh and its people, so that you will know, I mean, what you know, what what kind of culture I'm referring to, and then a little a small glimpse of the capital, so that you would know how crazy the cities are, and why I said that you have to go out of the cities to experience the beautiful landscape and beautiful places within the country mm -hmm. okay so i hope everyone can see my screen yep all right so let's try and let me know if you can hear i mean i'm uh, i'm asking i'm uh, making a request to our audience let me know if you can hear the sound or not if not then i'm gonna uh, copy paste the link of the video uh, to the chat. We can hear it. Is it no, possible? I, I mean, I don't think we can hear it now. But, yeah, but it's uh -huh. crashing a bit, you know. All right. So let me let me just. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be. That, the there was a bit of sound, but it started crashing. So, I, yeah, I think it would mm -hmm. be best if you could just. Yeah, um, I think it would be. Leave the best. link in the chat. So. Mm -hmm. so, everybody can. All right, here is the link I just shared. And uh, it's, it's a very small movie, it's like three minute movie. So, once you're back or uh, watching the movie, then please let us know and so that we can continue. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it so that you will have some idea about the culture and the country.
So once we finish the, I mean, uh, finish this movie, we can get back and let's just wait for our audience to finish. I mean, watching this movie. I guess we can go back if everyone, yeah, because uh, we also have to, yeah, we also have to look after, I mean, carry on with our time. Yeah. So um, that's it. Um, that, that's the, that's the, that's the culture that I was referring to. And now I will just play um i mean uh, it's it, i'm just going to share the, the 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 link for the capital city so that but you can watch it later it's not necessary that you have to watch it right now because then i think we will uh also we will have to struggle with uh time because it's already 6:44 so i think it would be better if you could just take a glimpse of it and uh or maybe just, just 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 let me show you for two seconds, maybe, so that you would know how crazy these cities look like. I hope everybody can see my screen, or not. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. So this is how the capital uh, city looks like. This is this is Dhaka, and this is the capital city. I'm not playing the video. I'm just going like this. And uh, what you have seen in the video, uh, the way the, the, this, this tourist is treated, it's exactly how the people are. Actually, it's not exaggerated. People, I mean, people literally treat uh, the tourist and any, any, any guest as almost like God, because they really, really, they treat other people uh, and the tourists coming from any part of the world, like uh, very warm. Uh, very warmly and super friendly and that's how common people are generally they are that's how they are so this is how but and this is how the cities look like it's all crazy as i said it's nothing close to uh, krakow or any any other european cities it's all filled with high-rise buildings and the streets are filled with car and there is uh, one addition which is also uh, this city is called dhaka this is the capital uh, the metro, and um, I, ca I can clearly, uh, you know, differentiate the metro in Warsaw and metro in here because it's crazy. So, and it's very modern though, but it, it's a lot of people. And that's how these cities look like. I just wanted to give you a glimpse of the city so that you will know that what I'm actually referring to, what I'm talking to. I hope my screen is still visible. It's working. Uh, and that was the, uh, that, so that's the culture, that's the cultural mix that I was talking about, if you have seen the video, so that you will know. And these are some uh, places uh, to travel inside the country, uh, name of the places, which I'm not going to read out because then, you know, you wouldn't know them. But if someone wants to know, I'm happy to help and share uh, all the names and all the information that I can give you. And the photographs you see in this uh, presentation are actually mostly taken uh, by uh, two of my friends. Uh, they are photographer friends and their names are Mamun and Fayad. They're also Bangladeshi, uh, Bangladeshi citizens, but they're photographers and they both live in the US. So I'm so grateful to them that, that, that you know, they allowed the, the they, they gave me the permission to use their photographs because I try to make photographs, but I'm not that great at making photos that a little bit. And uh, now a little bit about food and culture before we move to, uh, you know, uh, the 
another part, which is where I would be uh, talking a little bit about my work and I will be showing a little bit about my work. Uh, this is this this food is very uh, traditional. It's very extremely popular, and it's I don't know if there is any English name for this. This is called shingara in Bangla, and it also has a Hindi name. Different names uh, in the entire Indian subcontinent region because this is very popular. It's made with. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you sharing your screen right now because we can see it? Ah, you stop it's... sharing. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I think I did. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So sorry. It's okay. I hope you just really working. want to see the food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is the photographs that I was talking about. Okay. That these are the photographs. I'm sorry. I thought the screen was uh, all right. And this is the food. Can you see it now? Is it working now? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is made with flour and uh, vegetables and different kind of things. It's really tasty. It's super popular. I'm just going through the photos. These are some other fr fruits. The fruit, uh, the, the, not fruit, the food uh, on the right side, it's called jilapi. I don't know if, has, if it has any other name in English, probably not. And the other side, it is a food called biryani, which is extremely popular in the entire region. But Bangladesh is uh, supremely famous for its biryani. Biryani, it's actually, it's made with chicken and uh, uh, basmati rice. I hope we know basmati rice in Poland because most of the people know and some eggs and etc. It's a very delicious food. Oh my God, when I talk about this, I miss them. So these are some more traditional items. Uh, uh, this item on the left, it is a cake, which is made with rice and jaggery and different kind of things. These are some sweets. Again, uh, these are again some traditional foods. Uh, again, it's called kichuri and that's how people uh, pe people enjoy to eat during the Bengali New Year in that uh, bowl made with uh, made with what? Mm, it is made by uh, mm, 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 I forgot how to say it. Uh, what is the English word of soil? No, soil is the English word. Okay, so that a uh, clay, yeah, or mud, the, the, yeah, that's how it's made. This bowl and it's really tasty and it's mostly mostly it's mashed potato fish fry and all of that, though I don't eat fish, so I'm not going to talk about it. And this is some sweets also. So that's the, uh, that's about, that's the foods. And now just a little bit about the culture, not too much. I hope you can see the screen. I hope it's still working. So this is the wedding customs. Yeah. All right. Great. And uh, a little bit about wedding. Uh, this is a wedding uh, this is a pre-wedding ceremony. It's called yellow on your body or body tur I don't know how to say it in other languages. We, in Bengali, we have different we, different name for this event. Uh, this usually happens before um, the wedding, before the real wedding ceremony. Uh, it's, you have, we know about curcuma, right? Um, you put it on your, uh, you, so they put it on the entire body of the bride and the would be bride would be groom, and then uh, after this, you you give they give um, uh, a shower with milk, but well, if you're rich only then you get to shower with milk. If you're poor, nothing happens. And um, these are actually my friends, so I just wanted to show you how a Muslim bride and a Muslim groom would look like. So these are traditional um, clothing, traditional wear, and this is how they look. And uh, th these are some customs during the weddings. Uh, we we know about hina in Polish in Poland. So and these these are traditional some dolls and the design you see on the floor it has a name in Bengali, it's called Alpona. It's a very traditional design. Uh, it is, people draw it, people make it. I also make it during the weddings. And these are just some decorations, foods, traditional dances. Uh, again, uh, a bride for this, uh, for the ceremony, which is you put curcuma like uh, all over your body. And then you get a shower with milk, as I said, before the wedding. And these are actually two fish, and I'm not going to talk about them, but fish has actually 
a huge part within the Bengali culture. It's uh, it 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 uh, you know it's a sign of prosperity and a lot of things because almost every uh, how to say it almost every uh, animal they have uh, different symbols and symbolized meaning within the culture. For example, elephants uh, they have they are symbolized as the sign of um, power uh prosper no power and then intelligence yeah and then calmness and uh owl uh they have um, they they uh it symbolizes like uh good fortune and prosperity in that so in that regard many animals have different kinds of uh symbolic meanings and these are the some brides but these are this um this event is called probably in English, I don't know, yellow and body somehow. In Bengali, we call it gai holud, which is like, as I said, that you put kurkuma on the entire body of the udbi wide and udbi groom. And then it's a very, it's a fun activity, actually. It's it's fun and it's interesting custom. So these are just, oh, by the way, this is stage I actually planned all of these. Uh, not just planned, I decorated all of this. These, these were my cousins. They are both my, uh, this one is my cousin and this is, well, another friend. And this is what I was talking about. That's how you put it. That's how you do it. It, it was just a small, homely environment. It was done, but then if you have more money, like I said, if you are rich, then people do it super giantly. It, become, it, it, it became a very huge event. And that's how, that's all I wanted to end. Um, yeah, this is another Muslim uh, bride and groom. These are another friend. And their wedding actually took place in a mosque. As you can see, it's a mosque. Uh, mosque is the place where the Muslims go to prep, pray, like uh, the Christians go to church, the Hindus go to temple, and uh, Buddhists go to temple. So this happened. And this is a Hindu wedding. But, well, these are not my cousins or friends. These are actually actors and actresses. I don't uh, so. That's how a Hindu bride would look like, a Hindu groom would look like, and these are some rituals and customs. She's actually holding bay leaves. It also has cultural meaning. Uh, another Hindu bride and groom. Uh, yeah, and it, during the Hindu uh, weddings, they wear this kind of, uh, how do you say, crown which is a part of the Hindu culture, Hindu weddings, Hindu ceremony. And this is a Christian wedding happening in the church. And these are Buddhist people. So they have their own rituals, own way of wedding and everything. And this is called, I don't know, again, I don't know about the, the, the English name for this vehicle. It's a special kind of vehicle called Palki in Bangla. And it is especially made for the bride to take her, you know, uh, in the old age, people used to take, like the bride used to travel through this uh, vehicle to her new house. But now, of course, not anymore. So people you still use it uh, as a symbol during the weddings, but only the rich ones, only the rich people can afford luxuries like this. And uh, these are, uh, by the way, this is my sister. And these photos were during her wedding. Well, uh, this is another friend. Uh, she's crying, actually holding her um, brother. Well, uh, usually brides at our part of the world, they cry because they feel super emotional because the kind of family bondings we have, it's extreme. Uh, sometimes it gets toxic, but not most of the time. Most of the time it's really, really uh, good. And that's where we get all our strength. So before leaving for the new house, the house of the husband, this kind of emotional uh, moments it takes place but not all the time most of the time and these are another some uh, if i had time i could explain it but we we are really almost running out of time so no uh, these are some customs of uh, hindu and muslim weddings as you can see in the photo but it is not uh, not all the muslims practice this uh, only some like uh, someone is holding, actually, it's a book, and the book is Quran. 
holding above the head of the new bride it is believed that if you do it then you know good fortune and protection it protects the new bride while she is traveling to her um, new husband's house or new house or husband's house or in-laws house and uh, that's a hindu bride uh, actually entering first time to her new house uh, and that's it pretty much and these are again uh, by the way our these are post wedding receptions and our weddings are super 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 long it's like one almost uh one week or you know four or five days so that's it that's pretty much it about the uh wedding customs from different ethnicities from different group of people that's uh i i could go on i could go on and explain it a lot but i think no we will not be able to cover within our given time so i will try um, now i will try to uh show you a little bit of my work and i will just try to go through super quick because five minutes is left in our meeting so i'll have to be quick but if we could um sorry yeah if we could extend the a little bit of time because uh, you know then it would be great so that we could take some questions from the audience if someone has something to say something to ask i don't know but i'll try to go through some of my works pretty fast so let me share i hope my screen is visible i will just go through like this so that we will have less time you know uh is it is it working well can you see my screen yeah Anu? all right yeah 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 yes. mm -hmm. okay so these are some of my old works which i created before uh, unfortunately i don't have good photos of all the works but i tried whatever i have these are some sketches some old work these are the works from my previous exhibition which actually took place in 2021 in kashmir donle uh these are the traditional kind of drawings which i was referring to which i create uh, this is actually a part of babel in krakow this is another traditional one this is a this is a manual rice grinding machine these are just two women adoring themselves again uh, this is a mural that i created on a wall this is another mural i did mural painting this is another one and it took me i don't know probably almost yeah like two 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 weeks to create that wall this is a children's playhouse or a school this is another mural that i created on a wall this is another one so i'll just keep going rather than explaining too much uh these are traditional kind of and this is a traditional design uh it's called alpona you during the wedding we do it on the stairs uh on the floor and these are the drawings again uh previously i did them so these are all of my old works i'll just go quickly some sketches uh this is actually a beautiful stunning place in nepal when i went there these are just uh women working and waiting so this is a scene a village in the southern part of bangladesh it's a stunning that part is uh, it's actually the hill stations of the country mountains yeah this is another one this is from a railway workshop uh in my hometown and that's pretty much it and i will just share some photos from my uh, exhibition which took place just the inauguration which happened uh in in khaim so these are the photos this one i i don't know this photo i really like it for some reason <laughs> because it's it's interesting and also it looks funny the way everyone's you know looking at it at my work so i like this photo i just wanted to share i will go through quickly this exhibition is still going on in the museum uh, these are some of my works which are on display until the end of may i'm sorry that i'm going super fast because like i said that uh, these are all new work by the way i just created them last month and uh, they're all on display so this is these are all just people 
and um, I wish if I could give you um, description with all the works. These are the uh, the villagers, people from the villages. I usually make uh, these are tribal people from the mountains. This is just a little girl trying to balance with bamboo. These are two prostitutes that I watched and uh, looked when I was there. So I try to portray through my artwork, I try to portray the, the, the hardworking people from the society. I try not to portray, not to draw uh, the privileged city people because I don't find them interesting. I actually find them, find, uh, the people from the villages, people from you know um, the tribal communities, people from uh, br uh, the prostitutes that I worked with, because I used to work with different kind of um, NGOs. NGOs are non-governmental organizations, so I participated in a lots of lots of different kind of voluntary uh, works. I participated in, and uh, those were so I worked there with a lot of different kinds of. Um, projects. We helped the, um, these are five transgenders, they're just adorning themselves with transgenders, with prostitutes. I used to work uh, with them uh, creating awareness about HIV and different kinds of disease and different kinds of things. So I just try to use my memory, uh, things I have seen during my uh, holidays in my grandparents' village. And then I create something and then I just, that's all I try. Like most of these sceneries, whatever you saw in my work, it's mostly I use my imagination, not imagination, sorry, my memory with the folk art and folk forms of Bangladesh. And that's how I create them. So that's all I had to share. Thank you so much. Mm, thank you. And uh, I know it is almost impossible uh, to, to, to give idea about entire country and then its people and the food and culture and show my own work within this short time but that's all i could do thank you so much so um all right so over to anya now okay i would also thank you uh, everyone for your attendance and many many thanks again for the center for uh, comparative uh, comparative studies of civilizations for making this wonderful event happen and well, hopefully we'll uh, get to see more of Talha, more of Talha's art in the future. So uh, stay tuned. <laughs> we will keep everyone who's interested posted, of course, with the upcoming events. So thank you so much uh, for your time on this Friday evening. And hopefully uh, we'll see you in some exhibition maybe again. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, before uh, we go, so I would, I will share uh, some of my socials because um, uh, in the in the group chat, I started developing and just start slowly I'm trying to develop a, a, a page on Instagram where I'm you know trying slowly to upload my works so that you can if you are on Instagram you can follow so that you will have some uh, you will have all the updates about my upcoming exhibitions because this year. I'm going to have few more exhibitions in different cities in Poland and outside of Poland as well, probably, if uh, all everything goes well. So I'll try to be more active and uh, there. And I'll, so I'll try, I'll just share my socials. I'll share everything so that you can know. And if, uh, before you go, if someone has something to say, someone has any question, then feel free to ask. If any, anything you have to say, or if any questions.